Oaks. His opponent in the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with the white trim. He weighs in at 242 pounds. His professional record reads 32 victories, two defeats, one draw, and 26 wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Brooklyn, New York, and is represented by Mark Roberts Worldwide Entertainment and Sports, the former heavyweight champion of the world, Shannon. There you are then, yes, uh, of course, Shannon Briggs was the linear heavyweight champion. He beat George Foreman, of course, on points over 12 rounds in a cracking fight. Uh, we saw him last time out here, of course, on Euros 4, beating the very reluctant and very fat middleweight Warren Williams in three rounds. A very embarrassing affair, in fact. Uh, and having said that, Cedric Fields also had his last fight on Euros 4. He fought Oleg Maskayev for the Pan-Asian Boxing Association title and, and looked very poor. It looked like a setup for me. He conveniently quit in the eighth round. Um, and I'm afraid he didn't show a great deal of fighting heart on that occasion. Was down, of course, twice in the final round, but uh, it doesn't excuse him. So into round one, then. He'll need a big, a big performance here, I think, against uh, Shannon Briggs, just to try and regain some credibility, if nothing else. But Briggs, once again, making a fast start. He's famous for that. Former top-class amateur, of course, and recently, not too long ago, in fact, fought uh, Lennox Lewis at the WBC Championship, was beaten in five, but gave a reasonable account of himself, I thought. Lewis, clearly the best man out there. Briggs ranked number 11 in the world by the Independent World Boxing Rankings. I'll give you some idea of who's above him. Um, yeah, Chris Bird, the recently crowned WBO champion, of course, he beat the very disappointing Vitaly Klitschko. David Tua, Henry Akinwanda, Orlin Norris, Larry Donald, Klitschko already mentioned, Michael Grant, Mike Tyson, Holyfield, and, of course, the number one, Lennox Lewis. Nice left hook from Briggs. So as you can see, Briggs, very talented, nice fast hands, every punch in the book. Um, I just wonder sometimes about his inner resolve, really. Um, as you know, he did very well against Lennox Lewis and then came apart when he got egged. Um, he hasn't, of course, been used to being hit that hard. And that's always the problem when you get fed a diet of, uh, of no-hopers and suddenly you take a bang on the chin from a genuine world-class fighter and you fall apart. You rarely put it back together again. Big start this so far for Shannon. And easily beating... Easily beating uh, Fields to the punch. Fields a year younger at 28. So Briggs just about coming towards the peak, I suppose, of his professional fitness. Briggs, of course, from New York, the Brooklyn area, the same area, in fact, that spawned Mike Tyson and, of course, Riddick Bowe. And the problem Briggs has had recently, of course, as we saw in his last fight against Warren Williams, um, a fat middleweight, you know, he tends to fight at his opponent's level. And uh, Cedric Fields, I'm afraid, is, is likely to bring Briggs down here and make Briggs look poor. Briggs ought to forget who he's in with and just get on with it. But once again, you know, it looks like we could be in for another carry job here. And that, of course, is a euphemism for uh, a put-up. Um, Fields, very relaxed, going forward, untroubled. Briggs not landing anything too solid at the moment. And you've got to worry about that, you know. Of course, um, Fields' connections would have been contacted by anyone looking for a match with Briggs and said, look, you know, we'll take care of you, don't worry. We're not going to knock you out or anything like that. But a decent ride from Briggs to finish the round. And well, Fields saying, well, that wasn't in the script. We didn't agree that beforehand. So, you know, you've got to... I don't know, there's a subtle difference between a man who's serious about his job and uh, another who knows that it may not be as demanding as it should be. I hope I'm not talking out of turn here and uh, being unkind or doing a disservice to Cedric Fields, but he does look almightily relaxed. And Briggs looks none too serious. There's one big difference, of course, between throwing a fast punch and a real punch. 
And at the moment, we're not seeing any great power here from Briggs. He's landing them OK, but uh, not with any great intent. They're just arm punches. In other words, they're not thrown with any great body behind them. Fields, of course, trying to make this one look real difficult. See what I mean? Those subtle differences between how the punches are delivered and, of course, taken. And I suppose the, the only thing, really, that Briggs can, can do is stay busy and beat the people they put in front of him in the hope that one day he might get himself another shot at a championship. He's undoubtedly one of the most talented out there. And once again, Fields lands with impunity almost. And he's almost looking at Briggs there to say, hang on a second, Shannon, we spoke beforehand, you know, you weren't going to hit me too hard. But of course, Briggs has also got a responsibility here to try and make this one look authentic. And it sometimes is not easy. He's got to win the fight. And it's got to look reasonably impressive, I suppose, but without causing any damage. Big question is, will Field see it through to the final bell? Of course, he failed to when he fought uh, Maskaev. Oh, well, a big right then from Fields, but no problems for Briggs to take those sorts of punches. Fields not an almighty puncher, only nine wins in 18 starts. But having said that, he's stopped eight opponents, but no great class on the record of, hit, of uh, Fields. Although having said that, he's fought three Olympic representatives, Ramon Garby, Joshua Blockus of France, Garby of course the Cuban, and Nate Jones of course the American heavyweight. Referee for this one, Steve Smoger, who I was uh, on the verge of calling probably one of the best referees in the world until, of course, he uh, let Junior Jones off the hook against Paul Ingle. Naughty boy. So he just gets in the queue with all the rest now, I'm afraid. So there's the end. There's the end then of... Uh, well, what can you say? It's, it's difficult for me. Um, I've got no problems with a man earning a living. But I'm afraid when he does it at the expense of the sport, um, which could be the case here, well, that's a slightly different matter. So round three then, Briggs has won the first two. Uh, no particular problems there. The quality of punch, although um, not really done with bad intentions, as you can see here. He's normally got a nice round rod jab, Briggs. Um, and throws a reasonable right to the head and a left hook and uh, he's doing as much as he needs to do to win the rounds Fields for his part making things look reasonably authentic he's having a go in inverted commas now there may be some of you out there who think I don't know what I'm talking about but trust me I do Now, this is no more than glorified sparring. Look at this. This is, I'm afraid, they've not fooled anyone with this display. Not at all. And don't forget, there's no discounts when you buy a ticket because they say on the ticket, oh, the Briggs fight, by the way, is a setup. And I suppose you've got to say that uh, Cedric Fields is going to get himself a reputation as being the best heavyweight money can buy. And, you know, you, you, you can see as well as I can that uh, there's no seriousness in this one, at least not from Briggs. Briggs' record, of course, 32 wins, two defeats, one draw, and 26 knockouts. The two losses um, beaten by a, a blinding right hand from Darrell Wilson. 
and also of course that other loss to Lennox Lewis for the WBC title and maybe Briggs is the king of the who wants him club really he's uh, he's got too much talent for his own good really um, and none of the major heavyweights really want to face him so I suppose he's been forced down this road just to stay busy And Fields, well, he's not in the top 100. He's probably not in the top 200, to be honest with you. And uh, walking in here to Shannon Briggs, a world-class heavyweight, with not a care in the world. And that is very significant. And I don't normally commentate on exhibitions, but I suppose uh, no one knew that coming into this. And again, well, Fields are landing a few shots. But they're all far too relaxed for my money. Far too relaxed. Another round there for Briggs. Don't expect uh, Fields to win too many. Let's take a fresh look at this one with my rose-coloured glasses on and suggest that Cedric Fields is, in fact, a young man of 28 years of age with a 50-50 record being pitched in against a former world title challenger. In fact, a former linear heavyweight champion. And he's doing so well. rose-coloured glasses off again and we see Shannon Briggs going through the motions here in a, in a glorified sparring session against a man who hasn't got a hope in hell in the shape of Shedrick Fields but uh, they've got to keep Briggs busy and it's the second time in a row that Briggs has had a patsy well Briggs there warned for a couple of shots on the borderline And when was the last time you saw, apart from, of course, Briggs' last fight, which was fairly disgraceful, um, but, you know, the last time you saw a world-class heavyweight like Briggs throwing a punch without any bad intentions whatsoever. There's no weight behind these shots at all, and it is easy to make them look good to the crowd as well. I, suspe I suspect, though, that most of the people here now have probably sussed this one out, or at least they should have done. New York fight crowds, of course, very knowledgeable. Or at least they used to be. These days, of course, we're uh, lots of people being fed a diet of uh, of absolute rubbish that masquerades as championship fights. Although this isn't a title fight, it's only an eight rounder. And sometimes, of course, especially for the younger fight fan, it's difficult to know what quality is these days. And that's a great shame, judging by the amount of emails I get from what I suspect the younger people talking absolute nonsense. Once again, there Briggs just a very lightly tapping Fields on the face. And normally, you see, the body is not a no-go area. You can normally whack as hard as you like downstairs um, because it doesn't have the same cumulative effect. Um, and if, all right, if you can't take it, then fair enough. But uh, you, the, the rule is generally in, an, in, in a carry job like this that you don't hit specifically hard to the head, but you can down to the body. And again, Briggs here just flicking out those shots. Fields allowed to do what he's doing at the moment. Well, once again, once again, Fields very relaxed going through the motions in front of this New York crowd. Of course, the form book says that there's no way on this planet that if this were a serious encounter that Fields could possibly win it, or let's face it, would still be there after two or three rounds. The one draw, by the way, in the record of Briggs was that very hotly disputed decision with Francois Botha. 
who will face Lennox Lewis next, of course. And I'm not really having a pop here at either of these two men. I'm not nearly as much as I would have a go at uh, Riddick Bow when he was champion. Goodness me. The two defences he made of the title against uh, Jesse Ferguson and Michael Dokes. I mean, they just beg a belief. So as good... As Riddick Bow was, especially beating Evander Holyfield on two occasions, he will not go down in history as a great heavyweight champion. And uh, I'm not too sure that Briggs will ever go down in history as a heavyweight champion. Although, as I say, he has ability. After the third or fourth round, he belongs to me. And, uh, that's, that's why I do know he belongs to me. Well, a little inset there of Cedric Fields talking absolute baloney. Well, oh, mm, little right on the top of the head from Briggs, possibly. Well, now Briggs doing a bit of showboating here with these bigger punches. Occasionally, of course, you, you have to. Still fields, relaxes, and walks forward. Mm, far, far too uh, easy this for fields. So we've had a decent rally from Fields in this uh, fifth round, but uh, once again, it's going to go to Briggs. Bow, bow. Yes, it's going to go to Briggs, although Fields raises his arms at the end of that one. A little bit of news about Briggs, by the way. He was uh, a good amateur. But he's, he's a fairly inconsistent performer, and uh, one of his weaknesses is the fact that he lacks a touch of stamina as well, which is slightly surprising when you consider how well he's built. Into round six then. Everything so far, Briggs his way. And you know the great thing about having no pressure is that you can tend to perform well above your normal expectations. Um, you know, you can spar with a world champion in a gymnasium knowing that he's not going to really crack you on the chin if he could. Um, and, you know, you can, and you can tend to look reasonably good against some top-class fighters because you're relaxed knowing that there's nothing serious going to come your way. And I think that's what's happening here for Fields. He's, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't think he looks good. Um, but it looks better than he might have done if this were a serious fight. Once again, nice soft little punches from Briggs, as you can see here, nothing serious. And for all we know, of course, Fields could well be a, a paid sparring partner of Shannon Briggs. So they will have been through all this before. They know each other inside out. That has, of course, happened many times in the past. Sparring partners end up as opponents. And they're not too far apart. Fields from Richmond, Virginia. Briggs, of course, from... Brooklyn, New York, so not a million miles between these two.
And again, just these little punches slotted in from Briggs. Um, and they're the ones that give the game away. Only two stoppage losses on the record of Cedric Fields. Well, Fields now winging those big, big shots. He's only a small man in comparison, of course. And Briggs quite happy just to ride these punches. And I'm still not going to give Fields a round, and I still really don't want to give Briggs a round either. But I will. And also a round coming up then, Shannon Briggs. Well, what can I say? I've kind of dug a hole for myself, really. Um, so if it's not true what I've been saying about this particular match, um, it sounds reasonably ridiculous. But, you know, as I say, I'm almost convinced it is. Come on. Let's go. Wipe it up now. Jimmy, Jimmy. Sharon Briggs, then 29 years of age. Still probably five or six years left in the tank. And there's still, a, there's still a chance that, you know, politics permitting and uh, connections permitting that he actually could do something. Now, normally, with one or two rounds to go um, in, in a sparring session or an exhibition, they tend to start letting things go a wee bit, and that's what we're going to see here. And it's just a great shame that fighters can't relax in this manner when they, uh, they are engaged in a real fight. Because, of course, that's really, you know, when the psychology starts to get to you, starts to drain your energy, sap your confidence. Some people, of course, are equal to it and rise above it, but most of us don't. All of those wonderful moves that can be executed in the gym and in training, they just disappear on fight night and it's a great shame because you see some fantastic fighters in the gym and you wonder why they haven't won a fight that's what gets to them it's the big occasion it's the nerves it's the platform and it's the glare of the public scrutiny and you could say Briggs is one of those sorts actually because it always looks very pensive when he fights very keyed up but on this occasion, he's a, he looks very soft and rounded and everything is flowing nicely. Although, as I say, without any great injection of power. And of course, it's the sparring partner's job to take the odd liberty with a big shot. Just to keep the main man on their toes. I remember once sparring with John H. Tracy when he, just before he fought Dave Boyd Green. And uh, goodness knows how, but I managed to catch him with a hell of a left hook. And uh, it kind of woke, woke John up a wee bit. But, uh, you know, you can't really afford to relax when the man that you're supposed to be learning from suddenly starts to get ambitious. I didn't get ambitious, of course, against Tracy. It was just an accident, but uh, sometimes you can get lucky. His next punch nearly took my head off. So there you are then, that's another nice round for these two. Uh, you know, th there's nothing wrong with the, the way it looks. Because it actually looks very, very good. Both men still fit, raring to go. A round to go though, it's the eighth and final session. 
And, you know, any one of us could probably do eight rounds against a world-class fighter knowing that we weren't going to get hit and overused. Referee, of course, will be on it, in on it as well. The sensational Steve Smoger. Not anymore. Not for me, anyway. And it's the funniest thing about... We're very, very fickle about our referees. Um, you know, one bad night, and that's it. You're a lousy referee for the rest of your life, and it's a terrible, terrible shame because, you know, I've seen some, some great reputations ruined by one... Well, not even a colossal mistake, just one silly error. And all of a sudden, it just... All of your credibility just drains away. Because when you're so visible... Um, I don't know what it is about, about, but we just want to have a go at referees all the time. Um, it seems to be natural, because I'm not the only one. Fortunately, of course, most of the British referees are, are, are reasonable friends, but uh, I think if some of the Germans or the odd American heard, or the French, <laughs> if they could hear what I was saying, goodness me. I think there'd be a contract on my head. I don't suppose it matters too much to them anyway. Um, let's face it, it's only one person's opinion. Well, I'm not running for president, so... Uh, we'll just not get overinflated. But as, as I must admit, as as exhibitions go, it's actually been pretty good. I've seen through it. I hope you have too. Um, most of this crowd looked pretty well convinced by it. Inside the final minute, then. Well, there's a now a crescendo of booze from a section of the audience who know better. They do indeed. And you can lose respect, really, I suppose, for someone like Briggs. Uh, I mean, you know, we want the guy to be busy. We want, want to get on. We want him to earn a few quid. But uh, to do this for the second time in a row, I don't know. Well, now it's all over, and Cedric Fields is delighted to have gone eight rounds against a world-class fighter in Shannon Briggs. That's what the celebration's all about. They know he hasn't won. He wasn't meant to win. But he's, he's done, I must admit, it's probably the best performance of his life. But as I say, the reasons for that are fairly obvious. <laughs> Briggs wants to hope he hasn't won. And it wouldn't surprise me in the least if Briggs has been given every single round here. Here we go. Of the judges at ringside. Judge Joe Dwyer sees the fight. 76, 76, a draw. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> Ooh. Tony Ackerman scores the bout. 77, 75. And Judge Steve Weisfeld scores the bout, 77-75, all to the winner, by majority decision, Cedric... Oh, my goodness me! Field. Field. I can't believe it. Cedric Fields wins a majority verdict over Shannon Briggs. Ah, I can't believe it. That must be the upset of the century. Well, 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 can you believe that? <laughs> That'll teach him. Serves him right. <laughs> Maybe he should have chinned him when he got the chance. And let's face it, he had plenty of chances. But just through those little pity-patty arm punches, that's all he did. Cedric Fields, a world champion next. <laughs>